Jared Poland Frono's photo.com and this is your Mr. Brain Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Storyblocks and their massive inventory of studio quality stock footage. If you've ever been in need of a quick video clip for B roll, After Effects templates, or motion background, Storyblocks has you covered. We've been using B roll from Storyblocks extensively over the years, including in the. So this is 40 video where Steven grabbed the play screen video, TV static video, TV green screen graphic, and VCR eject sound. So as you can see, Storyblocks is there for us with royalty free clips, audio, and graphics, and they can be there for you as well. To sign up for Storyblocks, head on over to storyblocks.com slash Pro. First up, it looks like Apple is discontinuing the iMac Pro. Strike that, Apple is discontinuing the iMac Pro. On March 5th, Mac rumors noticed that the only way you could purchase the iMac Pro was if you bought the base model as upgrade options were no longer available. This does make a lot of sense now that there is a Mac Pro tower. The truth of the matter is the iMac Pro was a stopgap at the time when there was no Pro tower option that made sense. You know, cause that trash can thing was just as good as Oscar the Grouch. Will you stop bothering me? Three years ago, we purchased an iMac Pro for Steven, and a little over a year ago, we purchased a Mac Pro tower for Dan's editing needs. Thumbs up for Dan's editing of Photo News Fix. One of my biggest issues with the iMac Pro is the display. I rather purchase a Pro computer without a display, especially being I prefer 32 inch displays these days. The good news is, if you wanna grab an iMac Pro, you can head on over to Apple's refurbished store online and save a few bucks. But keep in mind, there are rumors of a smaller Mac Pro tower on the way and hopefully a more affordable 32 inch cinema display as well. Not gonna happen. Mac or PC? Let me know down below. PC is number two! But Jared, you can build a loaded PC for half the price and it's gonna be faster. It just looks like shit and runs Windows, but still, it's amazing. F you, fanboy. Next up, Canon Rumors has shared what it's calling the first specifications for the Canon EOS R1, followed by a note that says, please note the CR0 rating. Zero. CR means it's basically a joke, like Sony Alpha Rumors so take it with a grain of salt. Ah, ah. Nonetheless, the rumored specs seem pretty outlandish and mostly unrealistic, but since some people call us a clickbait channel anyway, assholes, let's read down the specs. The R1 is said to have an 85 megapixel global shutter sensor, along with the ability to shoot 20 frames per second at those 85 megapixels, and 40 frames per second when you switch over to the 21 megapixel option. Now, I personally do not think that it's going to have a global shutter just yet. Stack sensor, yes, but Global shutter, no. Not yet. I also don't think it's gonna be a super high megapixel camera. Usually flagship cameras go for speed over megapixels unless you're the Sony A1, so maybe we'll see a 75 megapixel sensor or something along those lines. The rumor also calls for LG QPAF, which could be the first time Canon breaks out quad pixel AF over dual pixel AF. An ISO range of 160 to 1,638,400, 1,638,400, 5 axis IBIS with nine stops, a three and a half inch, nine 0.33 million dot touch OLED, a 9.44 million pixel EVF, all for the low, low price of 8,500 bucks. I reached out to Roberta L with Canon USA PR, and this is what she had to say. I'm just gonna say, I don't think that these specs are even close. I can't see having a three and a half inch screen as a necessity and spending money to put that on the back of a camera. I don't think we're gonna see an 85 megapixel sensor right now that is a global shutter. There's a lot more to say about this, but what I will say is when Canon comes out with a pro mirrorless camera, it's gonna crush a lot. I'm not a player. Let me cut in here real quick to let you know that it's limited edition t-shirt time. Introducing the I Shoot Raw t-shirt. This limited edition design is currently up for pre-order and will be available for the next 10 days at a special discounted price. On the front, you have this amazing oversized design and on the back, you have a little birdie with a fro who has kicked me out of my own logo. Screw you, bird. Head on over to store.fronosphoto.com to pre-order this limited edition t-shirt right now. Now. And finally, I had a whole story filmed about how Nikon had confirmed a flagship Z series camera was coming this year. And then out of nowhere, they decided to make it official with a development announcement without 
telling us anything at all, which means I had to redo the story and shove it all up in this fix right here. I'm, lo I'm looking at the phone. I'm waiting for a phone call about this. Well, I guess it's not coming. Thanks, Madeline K, for the notification and the warning. You suck. Maybe that's why she didn't give me a warning because I told her that she sucked. No, that can't be right. So here we go. Nikon has announced they are developing the Z9. Oh, okay. You're a camera company and you're developing a new camera. Wow. Mind. <laughs> now let me rant here for just a second before I tell you what we know about the camera. Either announce the damn thing or don't. We all know you're developing cameras all the time because that's that's your job. One job. For example, Sony announced the A1 out of nowhere, period, end of story. They didn't say, we're working on this and it will be out in a year. They announced it and then a day later, it was at the factory with a cool jacket for me, but not for Steven. <laughs> It's like when people say on social media, big things are happening, can't wait to share. How about you just share it if those big things actually happen because they tend not to happen and you kind of look kind of stupid. You're stupid. All right, rant over. Here's what we know about the Z9 officially from Nikon. It will have a stacked CMOS sensor, have a new imaging engine, shoot 8K and look like this with an integrated grip. We don't know the price. We don't know the sensor size. We don't know how many stills per second it can shoot. We don't know the ISO. There's a lot that we don't know. You don't know shit, none of you do. But what we do know is that Nikon said it will be available in 2021, which means it will become available, then it will sell out quickly, and then they'll be like, it's delayed, we sold so many that we're sorry. Nothing for you. The biggest thing that Nikon needs right now, and I mean the biggest thing, is the autofocus. Yes, I harp on this a lot, and I will continue to harp on it until they get it right. Still driving the old model, huh? Yeah. Canon and Sony's autofocus is out of graduate school and already paying off their loans. In fact, I've heard this from some people that they are already driving Porsches and buying Leicas. I like a da cha cha. While Nikon has moved closer to middle school. T Today, Junior? Which is actually better than where they started in pre K. Bet that snack pack's pretty good. But the moral of the story is Nikon needs a D3 moment, something that shocks the industry. And as much as I want to move back to using Nikon because I love almost everything about it, I honestly don't know if they can pull it off. You pull it off nicely. As soon as they give us more information, we will share it with you. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix. This time around to check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And don't comment if you're gonna tell me that I'm a Nikon hater. Just save it for someone else. Jared Polenfronosphoto.com. See ya.